Hello, welcome back to Modkit Mayhem. I thought I'd do this little video just as a kind of catch up on uh, and where I've been at since uh, since the last video, which is quite a while, was well, a year ago, and um, there's been a lot going on, so I've had to sort a few things out. And unfortunately, modelling and sitting at the workbench has not been part of that, so I kind of had to put everything on hold. But I'm kind of back now, so I'm trying to do some things and uh, get back into it. And um, who knows? Let's see where it goes. I'm going to carry on with the T72 video. I started that back last year, but I never really got further than uh, finishing the kit and then actually doing the edit. So the last couple of months, I've kind of just been chipping away at it and I'm hoping that I can, I can get that finished now. It's a three part series. It's looking really good. I'm quite happy with the actual results of the video uh, and the, the, the finished kit. It looks, you know, for a hand painted tank, it looks doesn't look too bad. Uh, and well, you, you'll be the judge of that you see what you think but <laughs> I'm quite happy with it after that I'm not sure what's happening I, I'm kind of getting into F14 Tomcats recently so I've ordered a Hobby Boss kit and I'm hoping I'll start that and then maybe a Tamiya because I quite like the Tamiya kits and I've never never got around to getting one so who knows <laughs> maybe I'll go there with that one next uh, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who's st stuck with me and subscribed and you know, since the start and uh, and all the new subscribers that's it, it's um it's kind of kept me motivated when i couldn't really get on with the things i wanted to do in terms of modeling and um so it's nice to be back and nice to have a, a community and people are sending me messages which is really cool and i answer them as quick as i can uh, when i can so i'll carry on doing that as best i can and i hope you enjoy these this next sort of series of videos i'm I'll, the first one's almost done. Uh, I need to edit the second and the third. Uh, I'll do that as, literally as quick as I possibly can in terms of my time frame. Anyway, enjoy the video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll, um, I'll catch you later. Ta-ra, bye. This is the kit I started in June, like I say, and uh, I built it straight from the box pretty quick. It didn't take long, you know, there's a, it's, it's, it's a basic kit. It's not a meng, it's not, it's not anything, you know, special. It's, it's just a pretty cheap 22 pound kit. And, and just, yeah, it just went from there really. Uh, a lot's happened between then and now you know russian armor is not exactly the most favorite thing at the moment and uh, that's understandable with what's going on in ukraine the link sections on this tank aren't actually too bad you just have to put a bit of forward planning into how you can actually finish them and, and um, i found that the, the best way was to cut the rear axle this allowed you a little bit of leeway in terms of making sure all the links line up if you built them you know make them so that they're separate and don't glue the wheels on straight away just you know build it up as you go and then it gives you a little bit of freedom in terms of just rotating and just making aligning everything up because you, you can't see it behind the wheel anyway and it's so close you can't really tell you um you make life a lot lot easier for yourself do keep the front one though because that's much more important in terms of like it'd be a nightmare to try and glue that front idle wheel back on but the actual sprocket axle you can get rid of that I bought this a year ago and uh, I hadn't seen this set before so it was kind of uh, I was kind of interested to see what the colors were uh, little, <laughs> little did I know that actually it was just normal colors there wasn't anything specific Russian about it it's just that's the colors they put in the box so really I'd got these colors before so I didn't really need to buy it but you know there was a couple in there that I didn't have so it wasn't the end of the world you can actually see on the back of the tank here that um, you know, use olive drab as a base coat and then it's um, like green brown as a kind of highlight. It's worth having. We haven't got many of these colours. So once the kit was built, I undercoated it. Pretty standard um, grey primer, you know, spray can. Didn't use the airbrush for this, so, you know, kept it simple with that. And then just filled in a few gaps that I noticed. I started looking around for some kind of reference of, of, of a colour scheme that I wanted to do. I didn't want to do a standard scheme. I found this tank colors that were used in the Donbass region by the rebels. So there was an interesting color scheme there, quite a few different colors. It wasn't just under the block green. And so that kind of made it a little more interesting. I mixed up a color because you, I didn't really have this color. This, I mean, it looks like an undercoat paint, but it's actually hint of red to it. So it's kind of, I'd call it a cherry yogurt color. 
and I probably accentuated the red fractionally more because I knew that I toned down at the end and you know you wouldn't really notice it as much but at start it looks more purple than it actually is so yeah that was done but that looked you know kind of again added a bit more difference to the, to the kind of the overall scheme I used the khaki color to start doing the second block out and to be honest it was quite hard finding the reference for this tank I only found one photo that was pretty good you know in kind of resolution and then I had to search the net for seeing if I could find anything that was from the other side and I managed to find piece together some you know four or five different images of the same tank and some video stills as well which I, I grabbed from the actual fighting in the um, in the airport so with the khaki I just blocked out color blocks you know just and watered it down fractionally uh, use water for this rather than thinner uh, that works works fine you know I want to keep it this like I said at the start keep this really simple most basic paint scheme the idea was to paint something and show that you can paint 135 armor without an airbrush you can do some quite interesting paint schemes because the weathering takes over and you do that with brush anyway so really you just need a good solid base coat of, of, of colors and keeping them as thin as possible and you know and work from there here I went on to some some browns and the first initial brown was quite orange and didn't look right so I toned it down with a, a kind of a duller brown and I used the original redder brown to kind of layer down and keep them in the shadows and paint over them completely I just painted the, painted the flatter areas and then went back with the khaki and started painting blocking up the larger back areas because I noticed on the photos the back of the tank was covered in dust so it kind of um, really flattened out the colors so khaki was the best for that I forgot to fill the holes on the back here um, and so when I was painting them I realized that I'd made a mistake there so later when the paint dried I just put some filler in there and, and then painted over it the dust hides it anyway so you don't see it in the end but uh, it just goes to show sometimes you do forget when you're rushing back to the purple again mix that up once I found some some other reference for the other side and then just like painting some of the sort of the areas there Russian armor's got a lot of different faces so you, you know you've got to take your time and do it in blocks of color just painting sections the work away and to be honest with this project that was the best way for me to do it because I didn't have the time that I'd had for other project you know I literally had to work you know half an hour two hours at a time and so you know the tank kind of lent itself to that really uh, there I used a darker green on the back it's all very dark green and then I went to the Russian khaki I think it's um, maybe an olive drab I think it's an olive drab on this bit which again I already had the color <laughs> main sort of standard color base coat and then in that pack of the Vallejo Russian tank pack you get a slightly lighter color that you can just wash in over the top of it um, but first of all you know get the basic block color down and take your time panel by panel just work away at it I probably watered down the paint I mean roughly ooh, not so much 50 maybe 40 60 paint to water um, it's different with each color some colors respond better to how you thin them but you, you've got to thin them you can't leave them as they are uh, maybe the Vallejo air you can get away with that but even then I still water that down you know a tad a lot less but you know you still put a little bit of water in there but these ones the model color range you have to you know they're quite thick so really really make sure you're happy with the consistency before you start painting on and uh, and then just work with that it's, um, it's the best way of doing it and you don't get the kind of big sort of thick paint do it in layers like I said you might sometimes you might have to do it might work with one coat and then other times you might need to do two or three coats uh, depending what kind of finish you want I found mostly on this I was, was quite good I, I could get away with just you know one coat underneath the tank is always a good place to try out different things you know if you're not totally sure on the color put a little bit underneath there and just see how it how it dries you know because sometimes these colors you'll paint them on and I know half an hour later they're, they're quite a different color they've either faded or got darker so you, you're never 100% sure where it's going to finish so it's a good idea to just just be confident of the color by painting it on a, a scrap piece or uh, or the underneath giving it a little bit of time just to see where it goes and then you know whether you have to add a little bit of color or whether you uh, watered it down too much or you know just give you a little bit more confidence of when you're painting at least that's what I found I didn't really have any reference for the top so I kind of just went with the green as if the the rebels had just painted the camo on the sides and, and where they could on the skirting and then they didn't really bother with the areas underneath the turret and the engine area because that would take too long so they painted where they could get to quickly because these tanks you know they look really battered and well used so you know you just kind of uh, just think about how they'd paint it I use the big flat brush for this large panel areas you can you know you can do that with some of these which you know speeds up 
painting time rather than a smaller brush. So uh, yeah, that, that worked quite well. I found that if I use um, a flat brush, I can paint larger areas quicker. And uh, some of these sort of top areas of the tank are, are perfect for that. And then onto the turret and I painted the block, the reactive armor. Um, first of all, I just painted it a block green color that, you know, that I'd chosen and, uh, and kept it with that. And then some of the other later on, I, well, I toned it down to different shades. So it just gave it a bit more interest. Wasn't tightly sure what to color the gun skirt, so I just you went with a brown. I thought I'll just shade it up like I would. I was painting um, cloth or material and, and just keep it like that, quite simple. Probably, maybe if I was doing it again, I'd have maybe done a green or a very like, sort of light green, but um, it, it looks okay. And then I used some dark brown paint for the gun. That's always a little bit darker. That it showed on the photo that it was dark, so I went with that. Right, on to the tracks. Wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do this because the photo, you can see the tracks are, uh, they're kind of brown, but they're very, very dusty. So it's obviously springtime when these, that photo was taken that I kind of used mostly as a reference. So you need a base brown. I went with the good old chocolate brown, which is always good for mud, I found. Basically painted pretty much everything in that chocolate brown and ready for the, um, the coating of dust. Even the back of the wheels, again, you're not going to see under here, so you don't really need to spend a lot of time just, you know, getting covered really. And then the camo areas at the front are the where you kind of put most of your time. Once I'd done that, I put a shade of wash on it just to pick out the details. Just went around all the track areas and uh, yeah, put that wash there. Take your time, work into the areas just to pick out the details underneath the track areas. And uh, it just gives it an extra depth, um, you know, over the top of the chocolate brown. See, it's quite a bit darker now. I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do the actual mud, dried mud area. I had a colour that was the German grey, I think. And so I dry brushed that onto the inside of the track just to see what it looked like. And then I referenced that to the photo to see how close the, the look was. I tried different paints, some lighter, some darker, but the German grey was the best. And in the end, I went with that. It, it kind of looked the closest. I'd say it was a hint more green than I wanted, but you know, it was enough to get away with it, I think. In, in the end, actually, it quite good on the actual back of the tank. Another area that was kind of a bit worried about how I was going to sort of fade that dust um, look without, you know, it's easy to achieve that with an airbrush, but when you're with a brush, it's a little bit more tricky. So uh, that was in my mind when I was sort of looking for the right color to, to kind of dust over. Onto the tyres, again the good old Vallejo tyre black, it's one of my favourites, it's, um, it's kind of very dark grey but uh, it looks really good and uh, something really satisfying about painting wheels uh, when you, you know, you sort of just take your time and just go around and tidy them. In the end of the day this can be covered in mud so it's not the end of the world but it's a good idea to just uh, be as tight as you can when doing this. Use a you know, smaller brush, it's easier and uh, just, yeah, just sit down, bit of music and crack on. Now you can see the tracks are all, all done, ready for a coating of dust to get around to it. So I went on to another colour and I used some game colour green, which I had because I noticed the, the rebels, the Russian rebels had painted some areas green, I think for identification. It's quite a gaudy green, but it kind of, again, had some, a little bit of extra interest to the tank. It's a really hard colour to paint that streaks terribly, even when you water it. So I'm still not entirely sure. I think I'll have to mix something with it in future. After that, I went on to the exhaust area. If you look at T72s, they're absolutely filthy and rusty brown around the exhaust. The heat coming out of that exhaust just literally just burns the paint away and then it becomes raw metal, which then rusts and uh, leaves you some uh, some quite good textured area to play with. Very oily and black carbon. Um, but yeah, I started with a kind of base color. of Any brown will do, you know, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it varies from tank to tank. After that, I started painting individual blocks, reactive armor blocks in different colors. This is quite a good fun bit and it actually sort of really picks out the tank. It sort of suddenly gives it even more and then, you know, levels up and uh, yeah, it's really good fun. Some of the colored blocks were painted green or whatever, just 
pick out the edges and just give it a bit of texture here and there and just the sort of first pass of detailing you know get a smaller brush and catch areas i mean it's funny they use so many different blocks from so many different other tanks that there's a massive amount of color differences in the, in, in every block and uh it really adds some like nice texture to the tank of detail so uh, that was quite good fun to do that once I've done that, I then went back and used a lighter color to um, just pick out some of the panels on the big kind of block green areas. And uh, it just gives it a little tone. I mean, it looks really yellow there, but you'll see as it's drying, it, it really just fades out. So you've quite a subtle kind of look. And although it doesn't appear like that at the start, you know, oh my God, this is extreme this. But actually once it dries, you, you can you can just, just visible back onto the um, different block armor and uh, trying different colors. I think if you're doing a standard green tank, you can see there on the turret, a lot of that is green. It still looked quite cool, just painting very, very subtle tones of green. I think maybe when I do a T90 next, that's something I might do because it does look quite nice. Once you put a wash on it, it, it just sort of brings it back together again. Initially, it looks fairly like, wow, <laughs> you just got a bit too, too much, but it does tie in really nicely at the end. And you do want to have that sort of variation just to give it a little bit of oomph. And this is the advantage of, you know, because you'd have to do this masking that with an airbrush would be an absolute blinking nightmare. <laughs> you'd just be there forever. So you're going to have to use a paintbrush in the end. So really that's, you're just skipping that first airbrush sort of step. My idea with this was, you know, for me was just to, I wasn't doing a specific tank. I was just taking the sort of the colors off a reference and then just going with that and trying to get something sort of similar in kind of style and in look. And, you know, I think if I'd have done a specific tank if have, from their actual reference photo, I would have used a, a better kit, expensive kit, because there's a lot of detail that you need that it was quite missing from this. I mean, it was good enough though for, for the sort of painting, you know, to try the idea of seeing if I can do a complete kit with just painting. I noticed that they had like white painted lines on the hatches on the turret. Again, that sort of just adds a little bit of uh, interest. Um, I don't know if it was on both of them, but I painted it on both. It just looked cool. It probably took two coats with the white. I used an off-white for that. And then a really tricky bit, I painted just number one onto the green uh, lighter green areas but i noticed that they they painted their numbers on it and it, i tried to make it look streaked so it, it looked really hand painted uh, probably a bit over the top but it, it i know it just adds again some more depth once i was happy with the block colors i went back to the pledge and i just coated the entire tank with that and just one coat pasted over try and get every area you can and uh just a backup you start doing the weathering you don't need to i mean could have just gone on to weathering and chipping because at the end of the day um, i wasn't well i wasn't sure at this point whether i was going to use an enamel wash but in the end i didn't i just kept with the vallejo acrylic washes and so i didn't have to worry about so much but you know it's just just gives you the option and, and it protects it a little bit more The next exciting step was the chipping. And with this, I just tried different types of sponge and uh, and see where it took me. Anyway, that's it for this, this episode. You can see where we're gonna go next with the chipping. So that'd be quite exciting. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done this. I'm a little bit rusty. It's getting back to sort of like a narrating <laughs> these videos and watching it again you know this is trying to remember the things that you did it's a little more tricky where i was doing the videos weekly before i could remember exactly what i did thanks for watching uh look out for the next one the next one's going to be a bit more of the weathering and uh you know sort of tying it all together and uh, it actually worked out really well i was quite really happy with the results so i will see you in the next video thanks very much cheers Ta bye